it's a holiday weekend, also known as an I don't have to shave if I don't want to weekend. Although, truth be told, it's starting to get a little bit itchy. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd really appreciate it. So, uh, yes, uh, those of you, some of you may have noticed, some of you might not have noticed, the distinct lack of holiday videos this year on my channel. Uh, yes, honestly, time kind of got away from me. I usually do a uh, 12 discs of Christmas or 12 tapes of Christmas, sometimes both in the same year. That's where, you know, I take 12 uh, CDs or tapes from my listening stockpile, and yes, I have that many, at least that many, just in holiday albums that I haven't listened to yet. Um, and then talk about them, you know, listen to them all, talk about them in a video in rough order from least favorite to most favorite, kind of like I do with my bargain bag, ironically. Uh, but yet time kind of got away from me, and I was not able to uh, pull myself together, get, get uh, the time necessary to do either of those videos. So I decided, oh, take a year off, I'll come back next year to do those, um, partly because I won't have a bargain bag uh, in the way uh, to worry about doing uh, in December. Uh, and I also, uh, oh yeah, and if I'd had my brain together enough, um, I, I didn't think of this until like 8 p.m. last night, Christmas Eve, that I could have, you know, broken formation, so to speak, or broken the pattern in my Hold On CD collection series and done my uh, my holiday CDs chapter of my Hold On CD collection as a holiday video. Didn't even think about that. So, uh, yeah, either my brain wasn't active or... Uh, the time factor was just uh, uh, not uh, agreeing with me this year. But anyway, yes, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, bargain bag, yes, this is the final video, the final regularly scheduled video in my bargain bag series. Uh, it's been going on for five years now, from way back in the, in the day. Uh, 2019 was when I started it. Yeah, 2019. Yes, yes I can math tonight. Um, so yeah, it's been a whole lot of fun, but honestly, I'm kind of glad I am ending Bargain Bag when I am, uh, because it's, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit bored of it, to be honest, and I think part of it is listener burnout, ear fatigue, if you will, uh, you know, just having that extra eight, and in this, the case of this month, 16, because I decided to, uh, make it more difficult, <coughs> Excuse me. I had decided to make it more difficult on myself and listen to two bags worth in one month. So anyway, yeah, just having the little pressure, uh, added pressure every month of having uh, at least eight more CDs to listen to. Uh, it, as you can maybe imagine, it kind of got old after a while, so I'm kind of glad that I'm retiring it rather than trying to push it on uh, another year or two, uh, and then at which point I'd probably get really sick of it. Uh, so yes, uh, here we are. I'm going to... Uh, Yes, Bargain Bag has been, or was, uh, Grammar Nerds give me the proper uh, tense to put this in, since this is the final video, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of a mystery CD grab bags. I had eight of them, each in, in a bag, at random, uh, opened them up on camera, li uh, live, on camera in front of you guys, and then listened to them over the following month, and gave, me a, gave you my thoughts on them. So, yes, uh, I will not have, obviously, a bag to open uh, this this month, since it's the end. So I will be doing a double break, double breakdown of the last two bags. So I'll be talking about the 16 CDs I listened to this past month. They won't necessarily be in-depth reviews, just to warn you. Uh, and then after that, I will be counting down as part of my year-end thing. Oh, and that's another thing I wanted to discuss just a second. Uh, as part of my year-end celebration, so to speak, I will be... To talking about my top 20, or actually 15 plus 5 honorable mentions, Bargain Bag Discoveries of 2023. So yes, this will be a year-end countdown for Bargain Bag. Uh, but coming up early next year, I will be doing the true final grand finale send-off of Bargain Bag. I'll be talking about, as I'm calling it, my Bargain Bag Hall of Fame, which is my top 25 favorite Bargain Bag CDs of the entire five years of Bargain Bag. Uh, but yes, we'll get to all this stuff in just a minute. Uh, I was talking, I mentioned year-end just a minute ago. I usually do what I call my year-end spectacular-ish, uh, which is uh, usually three or four, sometimes five videos talking about uh, the best and a little bit of the worst in music over the past year. 
Uh, I'm only going to be doing one video and it's going to be less of everything. I'm, I'm going to be not doing some aspects of it. I will still be talking about my favorite uh, albums of the year, of course. Uh, but yes, everything else is just going to be... It's, it's a small enough quantity of stuff that I've decided I'm just going to make it one big video. Uh, it's probably going to be fairly, a fairly long video, but uh, I will be able to cram everything in there that I want to do. I'll talk talk about um, my uh, my year, not just in music, in terms of music listening, but personal-wise, lots of stuff happened in the year. Um, my favorite reissues of the year, uh, an in-memoriam in section of uh, music passings, music celebrities who passed away over 2023. Um, as I mentioned, reissues, my favorite soundtrack and my favorite um, compilation of the year. There won't be a favorite live album because I didn't buy any live albums this year. And then I will talk about, it's probably going to be just 10, it might be 15 uh, favorite albums of 2023. Uh, truth be told, I did not pay as much attention to new music over the past year as I usually do. So that is the reason for the more condensed version of my year in Spectacular. So uh, yes, that is what's coming up uh, in... Uh, the end of the year. I'm not sure when I will be doing my year-end video. Uh, probably right around New Year's Eve. It'll be next week sometime. I still I still have to uh, pin down my thoughts and the rank fine tune the rankings of my favorite albums. It's it's been that kind of a year. I've been distracted for for mostly for good reasons, and I will leave the rest of the explanation to my year-end video. Don't want to drag things out here, but uh, yes, let's go ahead and get on with um, my. Uh, Yes, let's go ahead and get... <laughs> sorry, my a little scatterbrained here. My favorite, or, or uh, the breakdown of my December bags, uh, both uh, mystery CD grab bags for December, in rough order from cast-offs to keepers. These two are not... Um, I'm doing them first, but that doesn't mean I like them the least. It's just I have already owned these two, and so I didn't have to listen to them, and I own them because I like them, so... Their placement in the breakdown is not indicative of their quality. That's what I'm trying to say. So, by Peter Gabriel. Fantastic album, one of his classics, obviously. Uh, Sledgehammer, Big Time, are, those are the two big hits uh, off of this album, the big MTV staples from back in the day. Wonderful album. Not a huge Peter Gabriel fan, but that one is one of my favorites, being an 80s kid. And then we have uh, The Ghost of Tom Joad by Bruce Springsteen. I have all but two or three of Springsteen's albums, uh, and this is one of them that I have, obviously. Uh, pretty good stuff. Not one of his best, but still a very good album. Then we're getting into the actual um, uh, breakdown of what I had not listened to before now. Yes, most of it was kind of, you know, ho-hum, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Oleander, with their album Unwind, this is a uh, kind of a post-grunge uh, alt alt-rock group uh, from the early 90s. Oh no, 2001. <laughs> Just a little bit off. Only a decade off. I mean, hey, give me a break. Yeah. Fine, decent enough stuff. Again, none, none of this stuff was bad. It's just, uh, well, as indicative of the reason why I'm uh, uh, ending Bargain Bag, when you listen to so many CDs, it all starts sounding the same. It takes more spectacular stuff for stuff to jump out at you and be memorable. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was okay. And then we have View or V U E. I'm not sure how how what they call themselves or how they call how they describe their name, but uh, yeah, uh, Find Your Home is the name of this album. This is basically kind of like Britpop. That's kind of the, the best, uh, most concise explanation uh, description of their sound. It was okay, not too bad, uh, but obviously uh, didn't uh, stick in my brain. Then we have a couple of country albums. The Essential Lori Morgan, uh, a collection of her hits, obviously. Uh, yeah, not bad, but uh, yeah, obviously all of that. I saw something in the viewfinder that I didn't recognize until I actually looked at it, and it's the towel that was hanging behind her head. Anyway, uh, yeah, great voice, good songs, uh, but, you know, decent songs, but nothing memorable, and uh, pretty much the exact same thing with Robbie Neville. Uh, this guy is mostly country, but he's a little bit... Or actually, no, this guy is uh, was more alt-rock than he was country, I think. Yeah. Again, another symptom of ear fatigue is 
a lot of the stuff from one month to the next kind of runs together, and you can't always remember exactly what things sounded like. But, uh, yeah. Again, decently talented, but meh. And then this one I was hoping I would like a lot more than I did. Uh, Leo Kotke, he is a, a pretty much a, a pretty legendary artist, a very well-known artist in the history of music. Um, I was expecting this to be instrumental, and that's the reason I didn't care much for it. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it wasn't what I expected it to be was the reason why I was not terribly uh, taken by it. Uh, yes, Great Big Boy is the name of this one. I had heard albums, and now I'm starting to doubt myself. Were the albums that I heard way back in the early 90s, were they instrumental? Or were they were they vocal and I just forgot? I can't remember. But uh, yes, this, this album, as were a couple of other ones, were released on the private music label. And uh, that's another reason why I was kind of expecting I would like this one a lot more than I did. Was uh, I like... Uh, several of the uh, artists that I've, I've got on uh, the private label over the years. Uh, that's another um, label that I might do a label spotlight video on and up in the coming years. I've talked about that in a few videos, doing maybe a series called Label Spotlight, where I talk about albums that are on a certain label that I happen to enjoy. Then we have uh, an artist that... Uh, uh, one of his uh, CDs was... Uh, Oh yeah, that was that was a previous year. Sorry, um, one of his CDs in a previous year of Bargain Bag was my, f I think my favorite CD of that year. So it's kind of inevitable that other albums of his would be a little underwhelming, and that's the case with this one, Babyface, with his album For the Cool in You. And I did recognize the song uh, When Can I See You. That was a radio hit back in the nineties, nineteen ninety three, I think is the uh, copyright on this one. Yeah. Not bad. He's got a good voice, but uh, obviously that one just did not float my boat very much. And uh, uh, continuing on with the not floating my boat, yes, I only I've only have like four or five keepers this month out of the sixteen CDs that I listen to. Uh, Robin Thicke with his uh, album A Beautiful World. Yeah. Uh, I mean he, he's talented in terms of the vo vo vocals and uh, songwriting and stuff. Just uh, didn't quite float my boat, as uh, that's kind of been the theme so far with Bargain Bag this month. And then here's one. I'm just going to take a drink here real quick. This next one was one of two that I remembered being in the Bargain Bags. Uh, long story short, I had actually bought all the CDs that were in the, bar the Mystery CD Grab Bags for these last two years. But since I bought 24 bags worth all at a time and just kind of stuffed the bags at random. Obviously, I didn't remember 99% of what I put in the bags, but this one and another one I remembered were in the bag somewhere, and turns out this one was in one of the very last two bags I opened. So being that I remembered it was there, I kind of expected I would like it more than I did. Uh, play by Moby. Yeah, for some reason, I guess my I had my expectations just a little too high. And yet it's it's uh it's in the non keepers uh portion of my stuff yeah sorry to say obviously Moby is a good artist and uh, yeah and some of these CDs again you know I I could do an entire video just on the philosophy of bargain bag or whatever you the psychology of bargain bag is um and it's like you know being that I have to listen to these CDs within a certain month. Sometimes I have to listen to them when I may not necessarily be in the right mood for them. And as something I've learned for uh, over these years is you can listen to an album when you're not in the right mood for it, and it, it can be one of the least impressive things you've ever heard, and you'll never give it a second thought. You can come back to it years later, and it can be one of the most amazing things you've ever heard. That's, that's the weird thing about music. One of the things I love about music is it can hit you in different ways, depending on your mood, it can hit you when you least expect it. And uh, that is how Moby hit me, unfortunately. The movie, the album Play uh, hit me. was It was very underwhelming. I may come back to it in a couple of years, and it may be amazing. And uh, the next, and this is, I think, the last one in the non-keepers, the, the cast-offs portion, is uh, Patty Griffin, her album A Thousand Kisses. 
Uh, this is pretty good. I might actually, I might give this one one more chance and listen to it again. But uh, yeah, obviously, fantastic voice. This was in the just you're just missing out on the keepers part, so it's it was kind of on the bubble. So maybe I will, uh, maybe I'll ride the bubble and give it one more listen. But uh, yes, Patty Griffin, very talented uh, artist and uh, kind of country folkish, Americana ish, uh, is what she does. Now this one, I hoped I would enjoy it a little bit more than I did, but I still I still liked it. <clears throat> this is a compilation called Brazilians, um, bossa nova mostly. Uh, Brazilian Brazilian theme music, obviously, because of the title. Uh, I have a friend down in San Diego who loves bossa nova music in particular, so um, and I think he might like this more than I would. So I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to send this one to him or whether I'm going to keep it for now, at least, and uh, give it another listen. So uh, possibly, yeah, I have not made the, the the old noodle up on that yet. Uh, and then we're getting into basically the keepers. Well, yeah, for now, Brazilians is a keeper. But uh, this one, well, I thought was interesting. The Dolphin Brothers, their album Catch the Fall. Uh, this is a duo made up of two members of the, the band Japan. Uh, it was the, the Japan was a band popular in the 70s and 80s. Um, Steve Jansen and Richard Barbieri are members of the, uh, the members of Japan who, who split and formed this group, the Dolphin Brothers. And uh, yeah, kind of new wave-ish stuff. Uh, I, I could describe it, but it's going to be in a way that you guys would completely not get. But uh, yeah, there, there was some stuff, um, pop, synthy-ish pop stuff that I listened to back in the late 80s, early 90s that I rather enjoyed. This, uh, this album was made in 1987, and it reminded me of those artists that uh, I could name, but you guys have never heard of them. But uh, yeah. So this one's definitely going to get another listen from me. Uh, next one that I rather enjoyed, uh, Michael McDermott. Uh, this is his, what is this, his fourth or fifth album. And uh, not, not only does it feature liner notes uh, by Stephen King, the horror author, but he also, Stephen King, also plays guitar on one or two, tra two tracks on this. For a while, uh, the, the magazine Entertainment Weekly had a regular column by Stephen King where he would talk about uh, whatever aspects of entertainment, and it was usually music because he was a big music fan. And yes, Michael McDermott was one of the artists that he uh, uh, spoke of very highly back in the day. And uh, I think this came as, uh, yes, this was made in, oh, 1996. So I think this was actually uh, predates the uh, that uh, regular column gig in Entertainment Weekly that he had. But anyway, uh, yeah, Stephen King has had a an interesting taste in music as as you might expect from a, an author with his uh, with his mindset. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, good stuff. Uh, vaguely Springsteen-ish. Uh, a little bit Americana, a little bit uh, Heartland Rock, as, as cliche as that subgenre name is. But uh, yeah, very good. Kind of singer-songwriter-ish, too. I would recommend checking out Michael McDermott's self-titled album. And then uh, the other two keepers, uh, which, and these, spoiler alert, end up in my um, favorite bargain bag CDs list of the year that you are about to uh, see me uh, unveil here for you. Uh, Live at Red Rocks by John Tesh. Yes, I know. He's he's kind of a punchline when it comes to music. Uh, you know, very, you know, new age s cheesiness. But no, not really. Uh, first of all, the, he's backed by a symphony orchestra, which I, I kind of dig. Uh, I, it, it just gives us the music a uh, better dimension uh yanni at uh i think yanni did an album with a uh, symphony orchestra and that was excellent too um mostly his original stuff as you uh would imagine but he also does a few uh covers he does fields of gold by sting and he also does uh, against all odds the uh phil collins song was it and oh there was another one i thought there was another one another cover that he did which i cannot tell what it is now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, a uh, very enjoyable, I have to say. And uh, excuse me while I put this in the ranking. I have a post-it note on the back of this one to tell me what rank to put it in for my album, my bargain bag CDs of the year. Yay, post-it notes. And then my winner, winner chicken dinner, uh, buy a nose because John Tesh was also a favorite of mine this year. Uh, the Brad Meldhow Trio with the album 
uh, anything goes. Uh, the title track is a cover of the uh, Cole Porter standard, Cole Porter, I think, standard. But uh, and yeah, this album is mostly covers of Great American Songbook and classic pop stuff. But uh, they also do a, co a couple of uh, uh, contemporary song covers. Oh, let's see. Oh, still crazy after all these years, the Paul Simon cover, so contemporary, I guess, contemporary-ish. And then Everything in Its Right Place, the Radiohead song, they also cover that. Uh, and there was another one I thought that was a uh, contemporary uh, song cover as well. But, uh, but yeah, very interesting. A little improvish, which I don't, uh, don't really care for. You know, they kind of meander through it. But, of course, you know, the core melodies are still there and still recognizable. So I really enjoyed this one. Very, very nice. And that one goes in that spot. So anyway, that is the breakdown of, pardon the uh, tray that I'm setting, I got the uh, tablet set on. Mm. <clears throat> Talking always leaves me parched uh, for thirst. Anyway, <clears throat> so yes, that is, um, that was my breakdown of the December bags in my bargain bag videos. Now let me call up a couple of uh, cheatsy notes on my phone here to talk about my favorite bargain bag CDs of 2023. Uh, yes, I've got a countdown of my 15 ranked titles and five honorable mentions. I thought I'd do it that way. Uh, but first, a little number crunching. Those of you, uh, some of you might enjoy the, the uh, statistics of bargain bag from year to year. Uh, this year, I unbagged 104 CDs, that's 12 times 8, and I kept 42 of them, which is a 40% keeper's rate, and that is actually, I actually went back and watched all of my uh, year-end bargain bag videos to uh, kind of see how this, the numbers lined up, and this was the second biggest, uh, this year was the second best keeper's rate of the five years of bargain bag. Last year was the best at 46%. Uh, I kept almost half the CDs that I unbagged last year, 46 out of 104. So that was pretty good. Uh, and the best month for keepers uh, for this month of Bargain Bag was December, this most recent month, which kind of figures, it, and it, it, yeah, that's kind of uh, skews the results because I opened twice the number of CDs. I unbagged twice the number of CDs. So naturally it would be a bigger number. Uh, that was six. There was another month that had five, and I should have noted which month that was. Couldn't remember, can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but there were actually five months out of the year, in each of which month I kept four CDs. So I don't think I've ever had that many months where I've kept the same number of CDs uh, in within a given year. So that's kind of, that was kind of interesting. And the worst month for keepers this past year was April, in which I only kept one CD. So a very interesting rundown of the numbers as pertains to Bargain Bag. And uh, excuse me one more second here. I set stuff up. I don't know why I'm doing that because the screen on my phone's going to go blank before I get back there. Anyway, that's where the magic of editing comes in. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and unravel, unravel, reveal, whatever the word is, my favorite bargain bag CDs of 2023, starting with the honorable mentions. I've got uh, Mr. Happy Go Lucky by John Mellencamp. I unbagged this one in November. And yes, I've got five five or six Mellencamp albums so far, including his most recent one uh, this that came out this year, uh, which will probably be in my year-end video. Spoiler alert. But uh, yes, this was a, a very good one. I mean, you know, Mellencamp has remained pretty uh, pretty steady, pretty de dependable when it comes to his albums over the years. Uh, so a very good, uh, very good album there. Next honorable mention is The Brand New Heavies, kind of a, uh, a jazzy R&B-ish group. This was their debut album, self-titled, and I unbagged this one in July. Uh, very, very good stuff. I really enjoyed that one. And uh, now some of these uh, that I'm showing in the video are ranked uh, not just for the content of that CD alone, but it might also have to do with if I, if they inspired me to pick up more CDs by the same artist. And spoiler alert, uh, this is one of those. Uh, his name is Mark Cohn. He is a uh, folk pop, yeah, or folk rock singer-songwriter, and this is this is his debut album, self-titled. I unbagged this one in May, and I've gotten his next two or three, his subsequent two or three albums, and uh, rather enjoyed those as well. So, yeah. 
very good stuff. And then we're on to some uh, New Age instrumental stuff. This is Acoustic Alchemy with their album Against the Grain. Uh, Unbagged this one in July. This is another honorable mention. And uh, yes, uh, Acoustic Alchemy has been kind of a hit and miss band for me. Uh, enjoyed some of their albums. I, you know, enjoyed one really a, a lot. And it was actually in my sister's uh, uh, my sister's collection that I inherited from her. And I would go on to other ones and not think much of not think much of them. But uh, this one uh, is definitely one of the better ones. So yes, really really enjoyed that one. And then the last uh, honorable mention is uh, Steppin' Out by the Braxton Brothers, a jazz duo. They are not related to Tony Braxton. I went and did research after I unbagged this one in August. And uh, yes, no relation to Tony Braxton. But uh, still, very, very good uh, jazz, instrumental, uh, smooth jazz uh, duo there. And now we are on to the ranked list of uh, titles here. Number 15. I unbagged this one in June, and it is The Spin Doctors, Pocket Full of Kryptonite. Obviously, um, can't remember the name of... Uh, oh, Two Princes was the big hit of theirs. They're kind of a one-hit wonder. And uh, but yes, and this one is spurring me to get the um, an adjacent album. I can't remember if it was the one before or the one after. Or no, I already picked it up. That's right, I already picked it up. I just haven't listened to it yet. I have a big CD backlog, I'm, like I've mentioned before. But yes, very good stuff. Uh, much better than just that one song that I had heard of theirs, Two Princes, uh, led me to uh, expect them to be. So yeah, was very pleasantly surprised by that one. Number 14, which I unbagged in way back in January, is uh, from my New Age days, uh, a favorite artist of mine, uh, Eric Tingstead and Nancy Rumble, a, uh, a duo one of them is a guitarist, and the other one is uh, plays woodwinds. And uh, yes, a great acoustic uh, duo. This is like their fourth album, and I have their previous three. And I also have two holiday albums of theirs. So, uh, so yes, I enjoy them a lot. And that this this was all before I picked this one up, or, or unbagged this one in a bargain bag. But this uh, the uh, booklet is was water damaged, and so all the pages are stuck together like glue. So I am on the lookout for. Uh, another specimen of this. Uh, the good news is I won't have to care what condition the disc is in, because this disc is fine. I just want it to replace the booklet. But yes, that is number 14. L very nice, relaxing, beautiful acoustic music, if you like that sort of thing. And uh, number 13, I just mentioned this one. This was in my December bag. Uh, John Tash, live at Red Rocks with the Colorado, Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Great stuff. Number 12 is a dual du, uh, two-disc set. No it's, no, it's not a dual disc. That's a different thing. Two-disc set, Lilith Fair, a live concert album from the Women's Music Festival. Uh, yes, all of the uh, artists. Yes, if I'd gotten the CD a few years ago, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have cared much for it and would have gotten rid of it. But uh, can, it has several artists that I've gotten into over the last few years. Uh, Paula Cole, Indigo Girls, uh, Lisa Loeb, uh, Susanna Hoff, Suzanne Vega, Joan Osborne, Sarah McLaughlin, uh, Jewel, Emmy Lou Harris, Patty Griffin, Sean Colvin. So, uh, yeah, an excellent assortment of female artists from that festival. And then, uh, yeah, that was number 12. I unbagged that one in October, by the way. And my number 11 ranking one, I unbagged back in March. And this is Johnny Clegg and Savuka with their album Cruel, Crazy, Beautiful World. A great title. Beautiful album cover. I mean, isn't that fantastic? And what were some of the good songs on here? The title track was really good. And then... Um, oh, the, the last song, Vezan Lebe, that was really, really good. And there were a couple of other songs on here that... Uh, Oh, Dela, I think that was great. That was was a really good song. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, yes, it, it's been, you know, eight months since I listened to it. So, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't... Confession, I didn't have time to re-listen to every single one of the CDs here. So uh, part, of, part of me was going off of memory. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yes, and that's another reason why I think it's a good thing that Bargain Bag is ending. The time factor, just, uh, yeah. Uh, then number 10 is another one that you just saw a few minutes ago. It is the one I unbagged in December. 
uh, Brad Meldow, Anything Goes, uh, the Brad Meldow, Meldow Trio, that is. So yes, that was number 10. Number 9 is one of the best world music albums I've heard in quite a while, the Rin Can Band. Uh, this one is called Banji. That's the name of it. Great um, uh, Eastern, you know, East Asian Japanese uh, sounds intermixed with contemporary pop. Well, contemporary being the uh, mid '90s. 1993 was when this was put out. So yes, a truly East meets East meets West kind of thing going on with the Rin Can Band. I picked up another of their albums, and actually it was one that Music Millennium up in Portland had. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't click with me nearly as much as this one did. Yes, this one is. It's my top ten of in my top ten of the year. Fantastic stuff. Wonderful. Check it out if you uh, haven't yet. And uh, so, yeah, the, the Rin Ken Band actually uh, was unbagged in May, if I didn't mention that already. And uh, now number eight in my favorite bargain bag CDs of the year was uh, somebody you've definitely heard of before, and that is Matthew Sweet, a uh, album 100% Fun. Uh, this one came out after Girlfriend and after Altered Beast, I believe. I think this was like the third right after those two. I might be mistaken on that. But yeah, I had picked this one up years and years ago. Uh, this was my first exposure to Matthew Sweet, and I did not care for it at the time. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, you listen to something at one point, you don't care for it at all. You can listen to it years later, and oh my gosh, it's amazing. It was kind of the, uh, well, I don't know if I call this amazing, but uh, still was very, very good. Uh, one of my favorites of the year, obviously. But yeah, I had listened to it back in the day and for some reason did not think much of his voice. I just I thought his voice was just not very good. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know who Matthew Sweet was at the time that that he was that he had the history or the uh, the career that he's had. So I just assumed that he was just some schmuck who thought he had a good voice and made a record. So everybody starts out with a certain very small amount of musical knowledge, let's face it. So, you know, you can't bash anybody for not knowing everybody's new at something at some point. That's something to remember uh, for those of you who might have a tendency to be gatekeepers. Just remember that. You you were in that spot once before, too. So, yes. Uh, anyway, to make a long story even longer, I uh, yes, didn't think much of this guy. Uh, the songs Smog Moon and um, We're the Same stuck in my head. Like, the melodies were... I, I remember the melodies. They were kind of fun. But, yeah, something about his voice just kind of held me back until all these years later when I really started to enjoy this album. So, yes, number eight, I unbagged this one in June. And uh, <clears throat> number seven, another one that I unbagged all the way back in January. It is uh, Mark Knopfler and Chet Atkins with their album Neck and Neck. You gotta, you gotta love, as I said back in the, at the time, you've gotta love albums with guitar puns in the title. Uh, so yes, two guitar legends teaming up for an album. It's just excellent stuff. Um, I believe this had a fair uh, number of covers of classic songs, whether they're, you know, rock and roll, rockabilly, blues, whatever songs uh, that I cannot remember. I think Yakety, Yakety X, I think, is one of those. Don't remember who did it first, though, but uh, anyway. Excellent. Album. When it's an album with two guitar legends like this, how can it not be spectacular? Uh, even though it was not in my top five. Uh, but still, it was very, very good. Uh, and uh, number six on my list, my sixth favorite bargain bag CD of 2023, I unbagged in November. And I had forgotten who this was. If you remember the video last month, I didn't realize who this was at the time that I unbagged it, which speaks of where my brain has been lately. Uh, this year has been very weird, which I will talk about in my uh, year in review video. But yes, the story. It is. Uh, this is a band fronted by a woman named Jonathan Brooke who is a favorite artist of mine, a favorite female artist of mine. And somehow, I mean, I knew that she was, um, she had founded the story, but for some reason, when I was unbagging this, I had com completely forgotten. But uh, yes, a very, very good album, just as great as her solo albums. And uh, yes, and I mentioned at the time that I had gotten rid of a couple of her solo albums before realizing that this one was in a bargain bag. And if I knew this was going to happen, I wouldn't have got rid of, gotten rid of them. Well, I was able to find one of them and buy it back from the thrift store that I had uh, donate, donated it to. Hey, it only cost me a dollar to to undo my mistake. So 
So yes, now I'm missing just one uh, of the ones that I uh, got rid of. So anyway, yes, very, very good album. Cannot remember any of the songs off the top of my head. But uh, suffice to say, very, very good album. Singer, songwriter, mm, folk pop, more pop than folk. But uh, and uh, any of her, any of her albums, Jonathan Brook, check them out. She's just fantastic. Now we're in the top five, and uh, this one I mentioned a few minutes ago. I was um, also considering the ones, the artists or albums that made me buy other albums by that artist as part of as a factor in their rankings. This is one of those. Jesse Cook. He is a Latin, uh, uh, Latin music guitarist. He is not Latin, as far as I know. I don't think he's Latin, but his music is Latin influenced. Uh, this is his debut album, Tempest, and I picked up three or four albums after this. Actually, his second album was in a subsequent bargain bag, ironically. So yes, uh, yeah, two albums in bargain bag, and I picked up three more after that. Uh, suffice to say, I really enjoy him. And the funny thing is, I'm not that crazy about Latin guitar. So go figure. Uh, and oh, and then this one I picked up or uh, unbagged back in April. And then uh, num my number four bargain bag CD of the year I unbagged back in February. And uh, this one, this one was actually at House of Records uh, on the racks, and I had almost picked it up a few times, and then I realized I had picked it up and put it in a bargain bag. Uh, Liz Wright, her album The Orchard. Uh, this is her third album, I believe, and I've got her first two and really, really enjoy them. A uh, great soul R&B artist, and uh, by this point in her career, by her third album, she had started moving toward gospel as well, more, more and more gospel influences in her music. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not big on religious music, but, uh, I mean, it really kind of depends on, you know, the artist. And, you know, the lyrics of gospel, I, I don't really mean anything to me because I'm not religious, but the the feeling that the singers put into gospel music, I can get on board with that. Just, you know, it, it's it's all about the feeling when, uh, f for me anyway, for my for my ears, when it comes to gospel music. Uh, but anyway, yes, she still has a bunch of... Hmm, it, this album still leans secular, but as I said, she puts some gospel influences in into it. And uh, yes, wonderful. And I've also got... I also, since this, I picked up her fourth album, which has even more gospel in it. Uh, so yes, another artist that you've got to check out if if you like jazzy soul music, Liz Wright. Check her out. Number three uh, is another one I unbagged just in November. Uh, my number three favorite bargain bag CD of the year, and that is the Princess Trust. Yeah, the Princess Trust tenth anniversary birthday party. That's what the name of this is. Uh, a great assemblage of live songs performed by '80s artists. Uh, this album was made back in 1987. So yes, you've got Dire Straits performing Money for Nothing. You've got Suzanne Vega, Phil Collins, Big Country performing Fields of Fire, Howard Jones, Elton John, Joan Armatrading, Tina Turner, Rod Stewart, Paul McCartney. How could this not be number three on my countdown, really? Yes, fantastic stuff. And be, being an 80s kid, it's even more uh, uh, meaningful to me. And number two is very meaningful to me uh, because uh, my sister was a big, big fan of this artist and the band that he came from. Uh, oh, and the CD cover flopped open on me. Uh, John Fogarty, and this is a live album called Premonition. Uh, yes, he performs a lot of his uh, the Creedence, Clear Creedence Clearwater Revival stuff as well as some of his solo stuff uh, in a live concert setting. And... His voice on this album is just as it was, as it was back in the Creedence days. Uh, just he just has not lost a bit. Uh, of course, this is back in two thousand four, so not 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 that long ago. So uh, yes, fantastic album, excellent from top to bottom. Loved listening to this one. Uh, there's a darn good reason why it's number two in my favorite bargain bag CDs of the year. I unbagged this one back in July. So yes, John Fogerty, Premonition. My number one favorite bargain bag CD of the year, and I just realized I forgot I was going to pull uh, something to to show in comparison to this, uh, but I'll show it later on. Uh, but yes, um, my number one favorite bargain bag CD of 2023 
kind of leads into uh, something that's coming up on my channel in February. Uh, it'll, it's going to be great. You're going you're gonna to love it. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to love doing it. That That's the important thing. Maybe you'll love watching it too. Anyway, Schindler's List, the soundtrack by John Williams. Uh, if you have not seen the movie, you've got to see it. Uh, just be warned, though, it can be, it is very harrowing, heart-wrenching movie, but uh, it's, it is a must-see, in my opinion, and the score is just fantastic. Uh, not one of my favorite John Williams scores, but uh, it demonstrates his artistry, his mastery of the art of film scoring. Uh, the theme, of course, the theme from Schindler's List is, uh, and I've said this before, is I don't know how much emotion can come out of what is in some ways an inanimate object. And I guess that's the thing with musical instruments is that when some uh, a musician takes them in their hands, they're not really inanimate objects any longer. They take on a life of their own. But yes, just the emotion that comes out of the violin in the theme from Schindler's List, that alone is reason to pick up the soundtrack. And uh, yes, I was talking about, I forgot to pull something from my shelf. Uh, since I got this one, I unbagged this one in September, by the way, I actually uh, was able to find, for a decent price, the uh, anniversary expanded release of the soundtrack from Schindler's List. But I decided to hold on to this one at least long enough to do this year-end <clears throat> year video. Uh, but yes, that this could not be not, couldn't not be my number one CD of the year for the reasons I just talked about, as well as for the reason that will become apparent in February. I will be, uh, I just as a hint, it will be a theme week for my channel, uh, which is a, a very deep meaning to me personally, and so that I hope you will enjoy. But uh, that is in February. So, anyway, just like that, Bargain Bag has come to an end, uh, officially anyway. Uh, there will be a, a an epilogue, so to speak, uh, early in 2024. That will be coming up pretty soon, as I mentioned. But uh, yes, Bargain Bag has been fun. Uh, lots of fun discovering all these new artists that I've added to my collection over the years. Uh, but it was time for it to end. Um, as I mentioned, it, it just has started growing a little bit a little bit tedious having to listen to all those extra CDs every month, in addition to trying to do some con you know uh, the rest of the content on my cha on my channel from month to month. Um, though that's kind of been that's kind of been a little lean this year. I will admit I haven't been doing a whole lot of other stuff, uh, but hopefully that will turn around in 2024. Uh, so uh, yes, now that I'll have more time for just leisure listening as opposed to commitments of uh, bargain bag. A video every month. So anyway, long story short, I don't want to make this video any longer than it already already has been. But yes, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.